What's up, everybody? We're back with a brand new video here on the channel. It's been a few weeks. I have to apologize. I had to put YouTube on the back burner because I was finishing up grad school, but I believe I'm graduating in June. Uh, everything should be in order and we'll get all taken care of and I can kind of get back to the normal routine. So for this video, uh, we are talking about keeping score and what you should do with the scorecard and you know, talking about like initial when you first start your round uh, for a tournament. So a lot of you have probably started tournaments already and maybe I'll give you some tips of things what to do, what not to do with the scorecard. But I'm, I'm bet sure most of you watching the channel probably haven't played your first tournament yet. So I want to encourage you to do that. But before you do, you need to know these rules about the scorecard and how to handle it correctly. I'll give you some tips, some things that you should never do with the scorecard as well. So stick around after the intro and we'll get started. All right, so first let's talk about your starting hole when you start the tournament. On your scoreboard, the cards for each player that's starting on your hole will be in the particular order, uh, vertically from top to bottom. If you are the top card on the scoreboard for that particular hole, you are responsible for grabbing the scorecard, okay? That is 808A in the PDGA uh, rule book. So let me give you some advice there. If you end up being the top card on your hole and you grab the scorecard, write the names down of all the players in the order that they are on the scoreboard while you're at the board. Do not grab your card and go straight to your hole and then just get the names when you get there. It's very important that you get the names as they are on the board because this is the order in which players will tee off on the first hole. After that, things can get a little uh, different. But for the very first hole, you wanna make sure you have those names in order, spelled correctly, uh, of all the information that you have on that board, you are responsible for if you are the top card on that hole. Just because you start with a scorecard doesn't mean that you're necessarily gonna keep it the entire round. If you like keeping score, you can discuss with the people in your group, ask them if they're okay with your keeping the card the entire round, and as long as they agree, you can keep it. However, if players disagree on that, typically you're gonna have where all players will control the card proportionally. So if there are three players on your card, you have 18 holes, then six holes a piece, the card will rotate between players so that everybody gets a chance to keep score. Okay, let's talk about what you should do when you finish a hole. So after you finish your first hole, the proper way that you should be collecting score. You want to call out the names of the players on the scorecard and let them tell you their score. Never, ever, ever, ever say, we got all threes, right? Or did everybody take a par? These are wise words from a local legend here, Jim Orham. He would always say that at the beginning of all of his tournaments. Never ever say, we all took a three, right? Because uh, what he would say is, if there's somebody on your card that really didn't take a three, they took a four. If you say we all took threes because you counted wrong, then they already know that you counted wrong. And they're gonna say, yeah, yeah, I took a three when they really didn't. So you wanna make sure that you call their name out and let them say what their score is you're not really tempting anybody to, to lie uh, you know, as much. You know, I guess they still can, but it's not as, as easy uh, to do that or as tempting. Okay, this isn't required, but I do recommend that you get your scores from everybody in your group before you move on to the next hole. As long as your group's not being pushed. If, if there's another group behind you waiting on the tee box as you're holing out, I would say, yes, of course, move on and, and you know, maybe get it on the next tee box. But if you can, try to get those scores before you move on to the next hole. That way, if there's a dispute, you guys can look back at the hole and kind of visualize where players were. You know, if somebody says they took a three and you believe they took a four, you know, it's easy to look back and see and say, okay, you were you were behind that tree, then you pitched out to the to the brush, and then you you pitched up, hit the basket, and then you put it in for a four. And the guy would say, oh yeah, you're right, I do remember being over there. So being on the hole and being able to visualize it is gonna help you, I think, you know, solve any disputes. But again, if you're being pushed by the group behind you, you don't want to slow them down uh, anymore. So I would move on. But again, I would say it would be best to try to take those scores before you leave the hole, if at all possible. All right, after you finish your hole and you get all those scores, those scores are going to reflect the new T order. So you don't go in the same order that you that you went in for your first hole. 
they now will go in the order of best score. So if somebody took a two on the previous hole, whereas everybody else took a three, then that person, the person that took a two, would tee off first on the next hole. In the event of a tie between scores, then you have to look back at previous holes to the previous order. Uh, tee box order does not change as a result of a tie. So it's very important that you're taking the score correctly and then refer back to those previous holes and their tee order so that you can help adjust uh, what your tee order should be based on that information that you have. Okay, let's go over an example of how you're gonna handle uh, tee order on subsequent holes after you've taken scores, okay? So we have players A, B, and C here. And of course on hole one, they go in that order, player A, player B, player C, okay? Because they all parred, everybody will have the same order when they get to hole two. Player A is gonna throw first, player B next, and then player C. However, after hole two, player two got a birdie. So when they get to hole three, player B, I'm sorry, I said player two, didn't I? Player B is gonna start off. He's gonna tee off first on hole three. Player B goes first. And because these two tied, we have to push back to see what the order was they had on the previous hole because tee order doesn't change as a result of a tie. So it'd be player B, player A, player C. Hole three, players A and B both birdied. C took a par. So C is uh, on that par train. He's a little, he's really struggling here. So because A and B tied, T order does not change as a result of tie. B will still T off first, then A, then C. Hole four, player C finally gets off of that par train and gets him a birdie. So now the order is gonna be all changed. C is the only one that took a birdie on hole four. So for hole five, player C will go first, then player B, because B was already ahead of A and they tied. B is second, A finally tees off third. All right, finally let's talk about totaling scores. When you total your scores and you tally them in, in the front or back section of your, of your scorecard, or you're gonna put them in the total box, always tally your scores with the stroke count. Do not put what they are in relation to par like plus two or minus three, always put your total stroke count. And the reason why we do that is because what you believe may be par for the course may not be what the TD or the tournament director is using for par. I just played a tournament the other weekend where on the courses, the markers on the holes that we play you know, casually, we would play that hole casually as a, as a par four. However, the tournament director did not have par on the scorecard. They didn't have it as par three or what the total par was. So what was par? Was he doing everything as a par three? Which is fine because you know your, your score with everybody else is just, it's, it's all relative uh, to, to par. It doesn't, it doesn't change based on what the par is. You know, if you're beating them by three strokes, if the par is four, then you're still gonna be beating them by three strokes if the par is three. So whatever the par, everybody has to play the same par, but you do wanna make sure that you're using the same par as the tournament director. Well, the way around that is to just use stroke count because stroke count is always accurate regardless of what par is. All right, now let's talk about how uh, a quick way to tally your scores. This is what I use and I think it's, it's pretty effective. Um, remember, we don't wanna put our score in relation to par. We don't wanna put here uh, plus one, minus three or anything for your, for your front tally. Instead, we wanna put the total stroke count. So let's pretend that par for all of these is, is three. So this is effective for no matter what par is for whatever course you play because the most common score you're gonna see across the scorecard is three. Well, if everybody takes a three on every single hole, on the scorecard, then they're gonna shoot a 27 here. So 27 is gonna be our baseline for our uh, stroke tally. Now, what you're gonna do is whenever you come across a score that is above three, you're going to add to that 27. If you come to a score that's below three, then you're gonna take away from that 27. Okay, so I'll show you, this is kinda how it works. So we're gonna say that player A is starting out with 27 after nine holes, he's at a score of 27. So it's still 27, 27, 26, 26, back to 27, 26, still at 26, back to 27, 
he shot 27 on the front nine. Now to look at it really quickly, we could say that the birdie and the bogey here, this one cancels and then these two cancel as well. So he did shoot an even 27 if all of these are a par three, which they are, but still, he shot a 27. Let's look at player B real quick. Here's another way you could do it if you know what par is. I would say one down, two down, even, and he shot even as well. If, again, if par is 27, that would be uh, relative, I would say, that he shot a 27 if I knew what the total par was here. So that one is a little conditional. You have to have some prior information if you're going to base it off of, you know, if this is plus or minus from par. But I would say just to protect yourself and make sure that you're always gonna have the correct stroke count, for nine holes, I would use 27 as your baseline three is the most common score you're gonna see. So anything that's a three, you get just get to skip over. You're not having to do any calculations with threes. So let's do that one more time with player C. So look, we're gonna say after nine holes, 27 is my baseline. The threes, I don't have to change anything to the 27. 27, 27, 27. This is one under the three, so this is 26. This is two under three, so he goes down to 24, he aced one. 24 still, 24, 23, 23. So player C really turned it on here and finished it. If we're gonna double check it, that's one birdie, two, three, four. So if par were 27, he would be four under par and that ends up being a 23. So again, start with 27 as your baseline and then you get to skip all of your threes. Your threes don't change your score. Anything above or below the three, you adjust your final score here based on how far that number is away from three. All right, guys, that's all I have for you this week. Uh, stick around in the next couple of weeks. I will be trying to put out two more videos. I've got a disc review coming, and I've also got another video where I'm going to try to give away a putter. So I've got a lot to catch up on. I know. Thank you guys for sticking with me. Thank you for checking this video out. Please like and comment. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I promise I'm usually not this uh, inactive. We'll see you guys next time.